that the presence of God is there, you got to embrace it, brother. You got to embrace it, my sister. You got to tell somebody, I won't let you go just like Jacob did. I'm not letting you go until you bless me, God. I'm not letting you go until I see the manifestation of your revelation. If you didn't understand it in 2014, 2015, it's the year that you got to say, God, I'm not finishing this year without seeing the manifestation. Am I talking to somebody? I'm not finishing this year without seeing the manifestation of my ministry, the manifestation of my gift, the manifestation of my child, the manifestation of my blessing. There is no more time left for you to be missing blessings after blessing while Jesus is walking next to you, while Jesus is right there in your presence. Hallelujah. We can be fully walking with him, yet lack revelation of him. But have indication of him. Oh, let me say it again. You can like revelation of Jesus. But have indication of Jesus. When I begin to look at my brother and how God is blessing him. Then I begin to say, God is there. When I begin to look at my sister. Oh, you don't want to bless somebody else because they're being blessed before you. But I will bless God when I see him manifested in my sister. Because I know that whatever he's doing with her. Surely God is coming around. Surely the blessing of God is around here. If somebody who's close enough to you is seeing the manifestation of God, you need to begin to praise the God who's there and begin to rejoice in the fact that God is showing you an indication that I can do this and I can do that. And if you can just cling onto him, then he will manifest himself. Hallelujah. The disciples, the apostles had had a lack of revelation at that particular moment. But they begged Jesus to stay with them. The presence of God is always there to validate that he is with us. Hallelujah. In your prayer closet, sometimes you say, God, speak to me. Speak to me. Yet God is silent. But you feel his presence. Hallelujah. God is just saying, I'm validating that I'm here. Even though I may not speak today, I'm here with you. Hallelujah. Listen, God's presence is sufficient enough to overbear anything that you need to hear. Ah, somebody missed that. This God's presence is enough to where even if he doesn't say anything, his presence is sufficient enough to sustain you through everything that you're going through. His presence is so strong that sometimes when you don't realize you're driving your car and demons are around you trying to finish you. But his presence, see, God doesn't have to tell you, be careful, uh, some sorcerer is trying to kill you. God's presence is enough to deter every single enemy of your life without you realizing do you know that there is many things that you've gone through that you didn't even realize that you've gone through yeah. simply because God's presence was there. God didn't have to testify to you. I did this to you in 1999 when you weren't even paying attention. But the fact that you've gone through everything that you've gone through ought to be testimony enough for you to realize that God's presence is sufficient enough because you know very well that many a times that you were not even walking in the righteousness of God yet he sustained you. You know that many times you were not even walking in the will of God, but God's presence was right there sustaining you. See, God didn't have to testify to you that I did this while you were sleeping in the middle of the night. Do you know how many people had been there staring at you, just mad at you, trying to eat up your life, trying to kill you, trying to finish you up? But because of the presence of God, they could not touch you. Do you know that there is sorcerers and witchcraft and witch doctors around you, people in your family have been trying to kill you since the age of five and as close as they've gotten to you God's presence was that much closer to you, so much closer that he was girding you and he said that you will not touch because she is the apple of my eye he is my, the apple of my eye, see God's presence is sufficient enough even when Satan comes and wants to lay a hand there's always a protective presence around us. Hallelujah. 
It is greater than what we realize. It's greater, it's much more powerful than what we realize. But the key is you, you cannot, you cannot let him go. This year, don't lose God's presence. Let me say it again. This year, don't you dare lose God's presence. Don't you dare let him go. You got to do everything in your power to keep his presence manifested. You got to do everything in your strength. If you got to pray more, pray more. If you got to fast more, fast more. If you got to sacrifice more, sacrifice more. If you got to give up some friends, give up some friends. But there is times in your life that, listen, in, in, in 2014, you miss certain things that you should have accomplished. You got to tell yourself that, you know what, this year, I'm not going to be distracted like I was last year. If God is showing it to me this year, I will do it. There are some things you, you know, you know you should have done that. There were easy things that you could have attained that. but because of the destruction that you allowed yourself to get into, this year you got to say, no, mm -mm, I'm not letting God's presence go for little things like that. I'm not going to miss my blessing uh, for little bitty things that I missed last year. Do you realize how many little things stole God's presence from you last year? Little. Not big demons that come to tempt you, but little things. The Holy Spirit speaking to you, wakes you up at three in the morning to pray. <sighs> Hallelujah. Little, little things that made you miss God's presence. This is the year that we want to see the fulfillment and the manifestation thereof. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And see, here Jesus, as he's walking with the disciples, he's walking in the flesh. The, the flesh of Jesus is the word made flesh or the manifestation of the word. And as we read in the book of John chapter 1, the Bible says to us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In verse 14, we see how the word became flesh and lived uh, amongst each and every one of us. So we come to the realization that the logos, the word, the spoken word has become flesh and it's walking with us. But here, what I'm telling you this morning is that it's not sufficient enough for you to just have the logos, but you need also the manifestation of the revelation of God, which is the rhema, the word revealed. Now, this is why I had you read this particular scripture in John chapter 1 when we go to the scripture the Bible says to us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him everything that was created was made by the word the word brings forth newness within each and every one of our lives because we come to encounter the Jesus made flesh. But here, the Bible continues and says, All things were made by him, and without him, nothing which was made was made. And him was life. And here's where we begin to speak on the 31st. Inside of the word, inside of Jesus, was life. Hallelujah. The Bible says, In him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shined in the darkness. But the darkness did not comprehend. Inside of the word that was spoken, that was made manifest, was life. Hallelujah. But the Bible continues and says that life was the light of man. In other words, life is the revelation of man. It's the substance by which every man needed to be able to live by. Here, in him, inside of the word, resided the life, but the life was equal to the light. Hallelujah. And I said to you on Wednesday that when you look at the root of the word light, it is, in Greek, it is translated as or. And or, spelled in, it's spelled in two different ways, O-W-R or O-R, you'll find it in both ways. But both of those particular translations simply are translated in the English language as order. Somebody say order. So, light equaled order. Revelation within each and every one of us brings forth order. Hallelujah. 
Because within each and every one of us, there is the life of Jesus. See, the Bible says the word had life in it. But the life was the light of every man. In other words, I can say, in him was life, and the life was the order of man. Hallelujah. Order inside of us is revelation of God. Why? Because of the fact that when God illuminates your spirit that might have been in darkness, all of a sudden everything becomes clear, then I walk in the revelation of who God is. Yet revelation, revelation, bear with me here, revelation brings forth order in our lives because now I can walk without a shadow of a doubt in my life as to what it is that I'm supposed to do. Hallelujah. When I have the revealed word of God, then I can begin to do things concisely and precisely based on what it is that I know that I know that God has said to me. This is why light is order in us. Are you with me? And so when revelation brings order in our lives, uh, it, it starts first within the spirit realm. Now, let me help you understand this a little bit better. When we go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, I want you to notice something. Revelation chapter 1, from verse 1. The Bible says to us, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and it was void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. Listen, God creates heaven. He creates earth. There is darkness. Hallelujah. But here, listen, the first thing that God speaks to create. He says, let there be what? Light. Now we just learned that light equals order. In other words, I can say, God said, let there be 